I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. Now, here's John Carter with today's message. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter here in Los Angeles, in the United States of America. I'm glad to see you. We've been locked up basically here for five months, almost five months. COVID-19 is not getting better in the United States of America. It's getting worse. Right now, more than 150,000 Americans are dead because of the pandemic. And there's no end in sight. Unless, by the grace of God, somehow we can get a vaccine. I want to send special greetings today to our friends in the great land of India, to Sam and his family. I just want to say we're praying for you during these difficult times of COVID-19 in India, where tens of thousands of people are dying. We send our greetings also to our friends down under in the land of Australia, to our great friends and our great supporters, and our special friends across the great land of the United States of America. We stand together during this pandemic. And by the grace of God, we shall overcome and we shall prevail. We are not afraid. And so from our studio, our empty studio in Los Angeles, we send greetings to you today. In Los Angeles, the situation is so grim that they're running out of doctors and nurses. Can you believe it? And so they're calling for the army to bring in doctors and nurses to stand with the civilian doctors and nurses. They're also using special refrigerated trucks for the dead bodies. And so today the world is facing a tremendous crisis and no nation is more affected than the land of the United States of America. Today I'm going to give you some of my meditations and <laughs> cogitations while we have been in lockdown for the best part of five months. Meditations, cogitations and maybe a few agitations. We're going to start this meeting today by reading from the Holy Scriptures. And I'm going to turn to the book of Psalms and I'm going to read Psalm 23, dear hearts and gentle people. I'm going to take it right out of the Holy Book of God. I want you to join me in the reading of Scripture. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. It's good, isn't it? He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. It overflows. This is great stuff. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can anybody say amen? I was in Russia a number of years ago 
in the great city of St. Petersburg, we'd been running a campaign in the largest auditorium in that part of the world. And the intensity of the campaign was so severe, after preaching to vast numbers of Russians and the intelligentsia of Russia, the professors from the universities, that I became very sick and I was put in a Russian ambulance in those days. That was a very, very, very scary experience. And I was taken off to this Russian hospital and put to bed and my doctor was under the weather because of too much vodka, if you get the point. And that night I became so seriously ill that I thought I was going to die. And so I got my Bible. I was strong enough to get my Bible and I read Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I want you to know today, even when we are facing death, that by the grace of God, we will fear no evil because of the presence of God. We will get through this with the help of God. Let's talk a moment about some of the grim uh, statistics, shall we? This red line represents the daily total of infections. Uh, Back in June, the daily infection rate was about 20,000 Americans a day. But then during the month of July, July, it has almost gone through the roof, getting above 70,000 cases, new infections every day, though the last few days, thank God, it has dropped down to about 60,000. But we're not through this. We're not through this. I want you to notice some other facts as we put them up on the screen. The United States of America, and by the time you get this program, or many of you, the figures, I'm afraid, are going to be higher. But right now, 151,470, think of it, 151,470 Americans are dead. We are now number one in the world uh, in death. Brazil... 87,000. The UK, 45,000. Worse than America per capita. Mexico, 44,000. Italy, 35. India, where we have our work and our prayers go out to Sam and his family and the people who watch our television programs. Uh, 34,000, and I think these figures are under the actual count. France, 30,000, Spain, 28,000, Peru, 18,000, Iran, 16,000, and possibly 10 times more. Uh, So we are in the midst of a tremendous crisis. Uh, We put the figures up again so that our American friends will get the reality of the situation More than 150,000 Americans dead. It's as though somebody dropped uh, a bomb on one of our cities. Now, let me tell you this. All health scientists are united in their conclusions. The pandemic is getting worse in the United States, but many are in a psychological state of denial like the majority of the British members of Parliament before the Second World War. They thought Hitler was a reasonable good man who was making Germany into the most prosperous country in the world. They believed that he was restoring traditional German Christian values. They refused to accept the facts. 
Now, let me say this. There's a difference between facts and opinions. Everyone can have his opinion, whether it is right or wrong. But everyone can't have his own facts. It is a fact that the flag is red, white and blue. Now, somebody will say, but that's against my opinion. Well, your opinion happens to be wrong. People say, but every person's opinion is of equal worth. No, it's not. No, not all opinions are of equal worth. I do not believe in the organisation that believes that the earth is flat. Do you? You can say, that is my opinion. But my friend, if your opinion is contradicted by the facts, then your opinion is erroneous. Now, the fact of the matter is the pandemic is getting worse. Even the King of England, King Edward, called David by his family, he was the guy who abdicated. He was sympathetic to the Nazis. Can you believe it? There's only one man who saw the facts and sounded the warning. And that man was uh, the old bulldog, Winston Churchill. He called him that bad man. He was mocked and shouted down in Parliament. Often good people are mocked and shouted down by people whose opinions are not in harmony with the facts. Are you listening to me, my American friends? Churchill eventually saved his country and saved freedom around the world. It is dangerous to, to remain in a state of denial and many of us here in America and other places are in a state of denial. Now, Dr Fauci served many presidents, Republicans and Democrats. I personally don't care whether he's a Republican or a Democrat. I'm just interested in the facts. And he calls our situation the perfect storm and the worst nightmare. More than 150,000 Americans dead. It's as though they dropped a bomb on us. Now, the crisis has now become politicised. But the virus is not a member of any party. Did you realise this? It's not a part of a secret conspiracy to undermine the government. It's not Republican or Democratic. Now, I'm a pastor, not affiliated with any political party. I'm a staunch believer in old-fashioned family values. So help me God. I believe in Christ and the Bible. I believe in the home, a father, a mother and kids. See, some people say, oh, you're politically un incorrect. I say, I don't care. I want to be in harmony with God. I believe that all men and women are created equal. I believe in old-fashioned values, honesty, truthfulness, decency and hard work. I believe in love and compassion. I believe in truth. So let's have a little bit of truth here today. Let's have a little bit of truth. And if our opinions are wrong, let's change our opinions. What do you say? Where did COVID-19 come from? Most likely from the wet markets of Wuhan in China. It has been called the China virus. And while we're not using that term today, that's where it came from, the wet Markets of China. The National Geographic said in markets, animals are dying. They are thirsty. They are in rusty cages and totally dirty. They may be missing limbs or have open wounds from their capture in the wild or injuries sustained during transport. And so these things, these things are covered in blood, covered in feces, uh, it's, it's disgusting. And this is where most likely COVID-19 came from. If people had been smart enough to believe Leviticus 11 that talks about clean and unclean foods, we wouldn't have this demon from hell today because Leviticus 11 says very plainly, None of these creeping things, no snakes, none of this stuff. 
But people, of course, were a lot smarter than God, weren't they? A lot smarter. They said, no, we're smarter, we know better. Now, some say it came from a Wuhan laboratory. I don't know. They say it accidentally escaped. I don't know. But one thing, it is now here and we are dealing with this cursed thing. I want you to notice Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2, and a few more texts I'm going to read to you. Psalm, I'm a great believer in reading the Bible because I believe it's the Word of God. I, I'm not too much into philosophy or the teachings of man. I'm very much into what the Bible teaches, and that's how it is. Uh, Psalm 46, 1 and 2, I want to give it to you. Here it is. God, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, even though hell breaks loose, by the grace of God, I'm telling you something today, we are not going to fear. And verses, let me see it, verse 10 and 11, verses 10 and 11, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. What do you say about that? I want to tell you something. Even though we have terrible earthquakes, even though we have terrible pandemics, by the grace of God, we're not going to fear. We're not going to fear because we believe, we believe, we trust in God. A lot of people find this pretty hard to believe. You trust in God? Absolutely. I trust in God. I'd like to share with you some great truths that have comforted me and given me strength, uh, Beverly's strength also, my family's strength, as we've been in quarantine. And later on in this talk, I will tell you how you can avoid this deadly disease. I'll try not to be giving you opinions. I'll try to give you the facts. But firstly, some meditations and cogitations while locked up and unable to go to Costco, even though it's open, and, and other places. Now, I've had a haircut, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> a lady who cuts my hair, her name is Liz, and Beverly said she wanted to have a little work done on her hair. And she said, you better have all that wool cut off your head. And so Liz came and we met together in the backyard where we've got four squirrels. <laughs> and Liz went to work. And after she'd shorn me like a sheep, Liz said, I won't need to come back for a long time, will I? I said, I guess not, Liz. <laughs> I said, I think, <laughs> I think as I said in the movie, she done me in. <laughs> Okay, here are some of my meditations and cogitations while I, we've been locked up. Number one, there are still a lot of really good, decent people in the world. You hear about bad things happening in America. I want to tell my American friends and my friends in Europe, there are still so many marvelous and wonderful people in the United States of America. Not all is doom and gloom. As soon as we had to go into quarantine, uh, we had the young men from next door who always working on cars. Young guys always working on cars and trucks. Uh, they're a family of one, two, three, a family of four. I think they've got 13 vehicles. Of course, this is Southern California where almost your birthright is to have several uh, several vehicles. They, uh, they've got 13. What does that work out to? Three per person. How do you? How does one person drive three vehicles? But well, that doesn't matter. They came to the door and they said, we want you to know if you need anything, we're here for you. They put a tear in my eye. They said, you're not alone. If you need anything, we care for you people. They said, we like you. And we are here, to, here for you. And then... The city of Ventura called us. Uh, see, we're right on the very edge of Los Angeles. We're like greater Los Angeles. City of Ventura said, now we know that you folks are not as young as you used to be. I said, who is? Nobody's as young as he used to be. That's a silly thing. But he said, well, look, 
What do you, do you need some food? He said, no, no, we're okay. But soon later, a guy was knocking on the door with a mask because he's smart. He's smart. Had gloves. And he said, I'm a volunteer for one of the local churches. And he said, this food is from uh, Ventura County because we don't, we don't want you to be... And they gave us a ton of food. We said, well, look, we'll take it this time and we're grateful. But we don't need any more. But they would come back every week. We'd say, look... We're okay. Take it to those who've got greater needs than than our. We're fine. You think we're we're fine? I want you to know, my friend, there are still lots of marvelous, marvelous people in the world. Then I've got a friend by the name of Javier. He is uh, a, a great friend of mine. He's a chef, and he's been sending us the best beans and lentils. He must think my name is Esau. <laughs> I had some of these lentils yesterday for lunch, and they were so good, I had some for dinner. Thank you, Javier. Lots of good people in the world. Now listen, just get this. This is a fact. I want you to think about doctors and nurses who are putting their lives at risk. Don't you put their lives at risk unnecessarily. Wear a mask. I think of some of their doctors and nurses. Some are now dying. Some have died. I think of the bus and train drivers, the first responders. I want to tell you, they're our heroes. We had a flyover of the U.S. Uh, uh, Air Force to salute our hospitals. They came up our valley, dipping their wings, flying over our hospitals. We salute them today. I want to say this to you. The great heroes of the United States of America and around the world are the doctors and the nurses, and we salute them. And I say to you, don't put their lives at risk. Wear a mask. So I don't think all is doom and gloom. I get sick of people who are always telling me that everything's bad. There are still a lot of brave, kind, good people in the world. And for their sake... And for the sake of our neighbors, we must do everything to defeat the virus that came from Wuhan in China. Can you squeeze out an amen? Come on now. So I'm going to tell you some things that are not my opinion. Number one, wear a mask. It's, it's been proven scientifically that you'll cut down your chance of getting the virus or spreading the virus by a factor of five, by 500%, if you're smart enough to wear a mask. Now, in the United States of America, we have the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. Hurrah, 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 hurrah for the Statue of Liberty. But we also need in the United States of America the Statue of Responsibility because uh, your freedom ends... uh, where the end of my nose begins and vice versa. Some people have got a really twisted notion of what liberty is. I do not have liberty to put somebody's life at risk. You say that's your... No, 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 that's a fact. That's a fact. And if you wear a mask, you're going to be protecting your loved ones. What about your parents? What about your grandparents? Young people, do you want to kill them? Because their chance of dying from COVID-19 is a lot more than yours. Practice social distancing. Keep away. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't congregate. Now, I've heard some Christians say this to me. Hey, God's going to protect us because we're under the blood of Jesus. Listen, my friend, please. What happened to your theology? The blood of Jesus forgives our sins. It doesn't protect us from sickness or COVID-19. You say it can't. Well, that's your opinion, but I want to go by the facts. The blood of Jesus covers our sins. That's why I haven't been to church now for about four months. There's a pastor 
uh, he had his, all his church people together, not many, 50 of them together. Alabama, I think it was. 40 of them now have got COVID-19. Hey, let's get smart. Let's get smart. Let's act like Christians. Love our neighbor as ourselves. That's what Jesus said. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor, you're going to wear a mask. Eat well and exercise out of doors every day for the sake of others, especially for the doctors and the nurses and the first responders, your parents and grandparents like me. For love. For the love of God and for the love of others. Now, I got so much good stuff. I've got, it's coming on. It's coming on soon. Cogitations, meditations during COVID-19. Locked up here. Empty studio. But preaching and teaching on. I'll be back very soon. Stay with me. The Carter Report is now streaming on demand for you. Now you can have the teachings of John Carter anytime, day or night. By streaming The Carter Report, there is more content for you to choose from, and it's easy. If you are new to streaming, all you need to do is purchase a streaming device. It doesn't really matter which one. You can buy a Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV from any major retailer. You, or a family member, can plug the device into your TV and sign in to your internet connection. Do a search for the Carter Report and download the app to your device. From then on, your device and the Carter Report app can provide you with hundreds of on-demand programs. You can also take the Carter Report with you wherever you go. The official free Carter Report mobile app can be downloaded to your phone or tablet. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the app. Additionally, you can find Carter Report programs on your favorite podcast. You can also watch us on Vimeo or YouTube. Type the Carter Report in the search box. You can watch hundreds of uninterrupted John Carter teachings whenever you want for as many hours as you want. Travel with John Carter as he circles the globe to bring the gospel to millions of people. Watch the Carter classics from over 50 years of ministry and gain knowledge from stimulating interviews with Christian leaders. You now have multiple ways to watch the Carter Report. And once you start streaming, you'll find comfort in having these teachings readily available to you whenever and wherever you want for free. Welcome to the inspirational world of John Carter. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.